really sure if I glossed over it or forgot about it or what. All right, so we're going to come back to revisit this because Michelle noticed that um, if you try to run, if she tried to run um, the contact uh, list, the address book app on her device, there's no way to add something. All right, why was there no way to add something? Because in a certain version of Android, they got rid of um, the menu options menu physical button. There used to be a physical button. Pardon me? Okay. So, what, uh, what there is now is um, if you go and create applications, there's an action bar. All right? And um, if you create a new app, you'll create it as an action bar app or an app compatible activity or something like that. So we'll, we'll look and see the old one and the new one. Um, and we'll see how we can take the, um, how we can take a, an old app like the address book app and um, make it so that. It can work with the menu, um, the software menu essentially, as opposed to the hardware menu. So this will take a minute or two, at least. All right, let me try running it. And I've already fixed this app to allow for the software um, button. So we'll let it build and run, and then we'll go. That's a problem in this class and it's a problem for people in the field and so on especially you know trying to pick a textbook is that stuff changes so quickly it's almost like I even you know once you pick a textbook it's probably out of date so you have to take the best shot that you can in doing this um, Do you know I can actually juggle? Let's see if I can juggle three markers while we wait. I was thinking it's like I should I should sing or, or do a, a tune or something like that while we're waiting. Um, but I, I wouldn't want you to sing. You've suffered enough. So let's try to juggle. All right. What's, what's good are like the little dog balls, you know, the, the, the like hard rubber balls, because they're like the right size and they're like heavy. So when they hit your hand, your fingers wrap around it. 
So I'll try little sheets of paper. If this still takes a few minutes, we might be learning origami today as well. I know how to do one cool thing in origami. Other than like your basic garden variety stuff. Okay. These are so light that, ah, anyhow, you get the idea. Let's see how we're doing. Thank you. When you have the evaluation, be sure to put that on there. Entertained us during technical difficulties. Anything new in my world? I have a large world. Or, or I have many, many worlds. So that's a, that is a good question. Um, not really. This is the end, of the, it's the end of the semester crunch. It's just like hold on and try to survive it, you know. I'm going to see if I can find a card trick online while I'm waiting for this. I'm actually proud of myself that I figured out how this one worked. Okay. All right. Take a look at these six cards and pick one, but don't say it. Pick just one, and remember, concentrate on it. Concentrate hard. You're thinking of the card? You got to think about it. You got to think hard for this to work. All right. We're not even in the same room. This is so this is like wireless neural network. It's going to read your mind, each one of your minds. Okay. It knows what card you picked. Amazing. They're now going to make it disappear. Drum roll please. Taking a while to refresh. Is your card gone? Yes, it is. It's amazing, isn't it? Any ideas how they do that? They changed all the cards, right. I, I remember when this first went around, it didn't take me too long to figure it out. And like everyone I knew was like, I don't believe it. How did that happen? But, yep, they changed all the cards. And, and if you notice, even the wording of it says, focus really hard on one card. They don't want you looking at the other cards, you know, to, to, to know what that is. Okay, so if you remember when we did this originally, there was, we clicked the, whoops, I don't know, we clicked something to get to that. Now notice that up in the bar there's the three dots, which indicates a menu. So if I click on that, the menu comes up there. And I click Add Contact, and I'm back in business. All right? Now, it's actually pretty straightforward to do, to do this. I didn't have to really code anything. I just had to make a couple of setting changes. First thing I did was, in my Android manifest, and I'll copy this into a text document. I 
I went in and added an attribute to the application tag in the XML. This says Android theme, and then I picked one of the themes. The key part of this is that I picked that it has an action bar. Because the action bar is that bar on the top that um, you can click on and, and, and go to town on. All right? So, when you do that, all right, you have to go in to this app. Build Gradle? That's not the one. And make sure that the minimum SDK version is 14, which is a long time ago. All right, so you're probably not caring about supporting people earlier than that anyhow, especially if you're doing a brand new application. All right, so if it, minimum SDK is 14 and you go and add that in, then that will go and it will uh, take it and it will put that um, action bar on top. And then that invokes the menu. It invokes the menu the same way as it always had. Really, the problem was, is on the newer devices, there simply is no button to press. All right? I mean, the logic was there for the menu, so if the button existed on an old phone, you could use it. The problem is on newer phones, they don't even physically have that button. Let's look at the menu logic, though, in general. All right. Menus consist of a series of items. All right. Item has a title. Item has an icon. Item has a title condensed. That will be if there is... Um, not sufficient room to display it, it'll display that string. In this case, they don't really condense it, they use the same title for both. And then finally, a shortcut key, an alphabetic shortcut key. So that's the XML for the menu. A menu, again, then a series of items. Now, guess how we go and create that menu? Well, we do it just like we did a lot of other things. That is, in the activity, we on create options menu. That's the code that happens when the menu is asked for. So if they have a hardware button, if it's an old device and they press the hardware button, or if they press the, 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 the overflow menu on the action bar, this code gets called. What does it do? Well, it's back to our friend, the inflator. All right? And the inflator goes and it inflates and it creates the menu. All right. So we inflate the menu XML and that gives us our menu. Now, in this particular case, if we look at the menu, oops. There's only one option. All right. Therefore, they cheated a little bit in this method. This method says on I options item selected. All right. Go and do something. Well, following the laws of logic, if there's only one item on the menu, and this is the item selected method, Gee, which item must have been selected? Well, the only one that's there. So we don't have to have any code that, that looks and sees which item got selected. So we just go and always do this. If an item was selected, 
then we go and do this stuff. All right? Which again, if you follow this, it goes and it starts the activity to add a new contact. Now let's look at a better example of the menus from here by looking at the view contact. View contact has an XML for the menu as two items. All right, two items in it. And they each have their own ID, and they each have their own title, and so on and so forth. All right, so the creation of the menu ought to be the same, and it is. So if we look at view contact, and paste it up in here, the on options create menu does the same thing, right? Doesn't matter if you have five menu items or one menu item or three menu items or whatever, the process is still the same. You grab the XML and you inflate it. And that sets the menu to whatever we've inflated from the XML file. Now, here's where we actually have um, some code to determine which option they picked. Because if they are viewing a contact, That's on. I'm wondering if there's like stuff there, but we're not seeing. Oh, you know what it is? It's the theme. That theme that I put on there, I'm guessing is making the text white, and therefore we can't see it. So that is probably Mike. We just can't see the labels or the text. I'll verify that in a second. I don't want to lose my train of thought as I'm talking about menus. Of course, I've already lost my train of thought, but that's okay. We'll try to get back on, on course quick. Now, when we pick there, there's two. And based on what we pick, we either go to edit the contact or de to delete the contact. We go to edit contact, and we go to this screen, which allows us to edit. And sure enough, there's, notice Bob shows up there. Bob must be the first person on there. So it is simply uh, the visuals are messed up. Um, what was all that about? Well, I said theme, hollow, light, dark, action bar. Let's look to see what our choices are for that.
Pardon me? Yeah. Um, Steam Hollow Light, what was this? This was Steam Hollow Light Dark Action Bar. Let's try Steam Hollow Dark. Light action bar. We can try any of these, I suppose. Or we can look and see maybe the better approach, styles. There we go. Text color is white. Let's make it black. Color is white. Let's make it black. All right. So now we go and run this guy. And all right, there we see the names as we click on them. Pardon me? Oh, I, I changed it? Oh, I'm going home. Enough of this. Android style theme. Okay, you're right. Hollow light dark action bar. All right, there we go. Thanks. I, I forgot that I was working on that. Well, something's... St okay, how do I want to put this? Obviously, I screwed something up with the colors of this, but you can see that the menu pieces of it are working, all right? Uh, and uh, it, is, it is a case. I changed the one color to black. I must not have changed. Let me look, contact list item. Yeah, Android text color, black. Um, this is kind of goofy that some of the colors they have in the style and some of them they have right in the XML. That's why it's best to put everything, you know, if you pick a direction, go in it. Don't, don't do part in one place, part in another. So you could put all the colors in your XML, but then put all your colors in the XML. Don't put all of them in the XML and some of them in the styles. And here we go.
There we go. There's all the people. Yay, finally. All right. So that's what you get if, if, if you're taking an old application, one that was not written with an action bar, and want to upgrade it to work with the new um, action bar and the overflow menu on that. Now, how do you know that it's one of them old style applications? You know based on what your activity is. In this case, activity or list activity, those are the old style ones. All right. So, what if you create a new project? How does that work? If you go in and create a new project, You'll go in here, you can create it. Oh, you know what? Shoot. All right. <coughs> yeah, the problem was that um, with the screen resolution, I couldn't get to the button um, when it projected it because it changes the screen resolution when I plug it in there. So anyhow, you can click either a blank activity will give me a, I think they call this a floating menu or a floating something. And this is the um, action bar. Or I can pick any of these other sort of things. Scrolling activity, master detail, login, and so on. So for most of the ones that you're working on, you'll create a blank activity. And when you create that, you'll notice that by default, you get your menu already hooked up. So if you're doing it from scratch, it would be best to use one of those as opposed to doing it the old way and adding the activity bar. But if you want to run Deedle's examples and you can't because there's no menu, that will allow you to do it. So now if we look at this, we'll notice that our app contains actually a main activity which is of type app compat activity. So it's compatible across any sort of, uh, or it's more compatible across versions of this. Snack bar must be something that replaced toast, because that was a new one on me when I saw it, when I looked at this. But at any rate, they do have a menu, and the menu simply displays the, what's in the XML, which right now oh, oh God. is empty. So we won't get anything when we, dis when we run this and display the menu. I could copy over like from add contact for the address book. I could copy over this item just to have something in the menu. Oh, there is a menu item. It just says settings. So we can run this app, the new app I created, and automatically you get a menu up there. So here's our Hello World app. 
and it already has by default the button that you press to get the menu. All right. So if you're creating it from scratch, which would be my suggestion for this, even if you want to copy and paste some of the code from the Deedle database one in, create it from scratch and you get this for free and don't have to mess with it. This little floating thing down here, you click and it displays a little message on the bottom. Um, you actually can put code in there and that is on the floating action bar. You can, you can put your own sort of action there. In this case, it just pops up a snack bar, which apparently is a new version of Toast. A um, little message that, that pops up and says that. I'm guessing that they call it snack bar because it pops at the bottom of the screen, as opposed to Toast, which pops up here. That would be my guess. But at any rate, yes. Where they inflate it? Where do they declare what? They just combine all that into one instruction. All right. Like, let's look at how they did it in this code and how they did it in this code. Yeah. Pardon me? Well, let's back up because I think we're asking two different questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's all right. All right, notice this. This says the following. This says menu inflator inflator equals get menu inflator. Then we say inflator dot inflate. And we call that. That's what we do in the old one. And when you looked at the new one you didn't see that code, but we see this instead. We see get menu inflator inflate those two statements are equivalent those two sets of statements are equivalent because this gives me the inflator and stores it in a variable then we call the inflate method on that inflator object this returns me the inflator object which is the same thing this one does and then calls the inflate method from it. So it's the same code. All right. Um, no just no variable. They just didn't store it in a variable. And, and you can do that. If, if a function returns something, you can then use the return value to call, you can call a method on that return value object that gets returned. So in this case, this returns the inflator. Instead of stuffing it in a pointer called inflator, we're simply saying, okay, whatever inflator you give me, let's call the inflate method on it. So it's almost like, not, not identical, but it's almost like, you know, the old um, class C equals new class versus class C. Then C equals new class. Just sort of a terser way to say it. All right? Because really, in that other one, we don't do anything with that variable anyhow. After we inflate it, it's done. Now, what was your question? Oh, I just didn't know. 
for, for which one? For the address book, yeah, there's actually several activities. There, it's not called main activity. But it's all within the, the Java classes. Yeah, but it's within the Java classes. The main, the, the quote main activity is address book. Yes, that's yeah, I'm that's the one that gets fired off. And then these other activities get called through intents. All right. Okay. Let's see. What's next? Any questions about this stuff? The, the last thing we kind of left hanging was what? Was the custom view. Here's our main XML. Notice that I have a custom view, watermarked image view, which extends the Android widget items view. So what is that saying? That is saying that my watermarked image view is an image view, but it's an image view that has some additional capabilities to it, namely the ability to put a watermark on it. All right? So. That's the first thing I do. We'll come back to this later. Because let's look at the XML. In the XML, I define that this particular thing that appears on the screen, there's actually two watermarked images here. There's two watermarked images in the XML. And if we look, some of the attributes are the same thing that you'd find on a regular image view. Why is that? Well, this is an image view. It's just a special kind of image view. But you'll notice that there are some additional attributes. And this relates to the size and position of the watermark. Notice these things don't start with Android. All right. Why don't they start with Android? They don't start with Android because they're not something that's built in the Android framework. They're something that I have created. And therefore, I create my namespace for that. And typically, when you create a namespace for that, you put in that it comes from the resources and then uh, the package name. All right. So, this allows me to create a watermarked image view that is an image view, has all the properties of an image view, but I can set some of my own properties, namely the position and the size of the watermark. Well, the question is, remember, is, is this is sort of the, uh, you know, the, the uninflated layout. It's the XML of a layout. And when we create the layout, it actually brings it to life and actually creates the object. The question is, is how do these properties get from the XML into the actual object? Well, that happens by defining an attribute XML. And in this, I define that I can have these following attributes on a watermarked image. All right. I can have an attribute name of watermark size. So I can have a watermark size. I can have an X and I can have a Y. All right. Now, how does this come into play? Well,
when this is created, when this object is created, I have three values default for those three attributes. The watermark size, the X, and the Y. And I set them to 30, 30, and 150. In other words, if I don't put anything in the XML for those, for these attributes, that's what it's going to default them to. In the XML uh, that you normally create for other image views, there's some attributes you have to put on there. It will give you an error otherwise. But there's some attributes that you can omit. And if you omit them, it gets whatever the default value is. Well, here in my class, I'm defining, well, that's the default values. 30, 30, and 150. So, I create a couple constructors. And I have a set attributes method because one of the constructors that can be called is going to give it a set of attributes. This is all the framework's business. All right. If I get the attributes and I want to do something with them. So what I do is I grab the attributes all right, from the XML and I set the values of that watermark size X and Y by pulling the value from the attributes that gets passed in. In other words, let's, let's think about this on a bigger scale. All right. When I create a view, all right, when I create a view, I'm creating a view based on my XML. All these attributes have to get accounted for in the view. They have to get initialized in the view. And therefore, a constructor is going to be called that passes those attributes. All right? So, the code itself then decides what to do with those attributes. And it pulls out from the attributes the relevant attributes based on what we've defined as being stylable. So in other words, we've defined as being stylable the watermark size, the name, or, or the X and the Y. So what this line of code is going to do is it's going to pull an array out of all the things that are in my stylable XML file for watermarked image, which again is watermark size, X and Y. It's pulling out a typed array. Uh, a typed array is where you have a name and a value associated with it. And here's what we're doing is we're getting the integer from that array that corresponds to the name R stylable watermark image view, watermark size. Watermark image view, X, watermark Y. So essentially what we're doing is we're pulling the values from this XML file and setting the attributes of my new object. The framework already has code to do that for the rest of the image view thing and the rest of the text view things, and the rest of the edit text view attributes. But because this was a custom view, a view that I created, I had to code this to be able to handle the XML properties that exist in, um, in, uh, in the XML for this particular custom view. So now, these things get passed into this object. It says these properties. Now what is the last step of the picture? Last piece of the puzzle. The last piece of the puzzle is to actually override the draw method on an image view. 
All right. What does a draw method on an image view do? It displays an image. All right. What do we want to do? Well, we want to do the same thing. We want to display the image, but we then also want to display over top of that a watermark. So we override the on draw method, the method that draws the image. We call super on draw that actually draws the image just like a regular image view. Then we add our own and we create um, a new paintbrush. A paintbrush is something we can use to draw on a canvas. And we set the colors to 200, I think, is the opacity. Uh, 250, or 255, 255, 255 is white. Set style as paint.style.stroke. That's a certain kind of writing. We set the size to the watermark size, and then we draw the text, copyright Mike Zellers, with the paintbrush in position X and Y. All right. So we could change this if we wanted to, to I'll make it complete opacity, uh, complete solid, and I'll make it red. And instead of paint style stroke, I'll say paint style fill and stroke. That will make it, if you remember last time, it was a little hard to read. And I can go in here and I can make the watermark size bigger. And now I can go and run this and I don't know what that was all about. All right, now we can see the watermark in that position, and it's red, and it's there. Now, what's the advantage of doing this? The advantage once we do this is if we have something that we're going to do over and over and over again, we then now have our own little component that we can plug in. So if I was a photographer and I was doing an application, and I wanted to watermark all my images, I wouldn't have to manually go in and edit all those images. I could simply go in and instead of declaring them as an image view, I declare them as a watermark image view. And I can default the values of the special properties for image view, or I can set it up so that I can define those properties via XML. All right? In other words, once I've defined it, it acts like a regular view that's part of the framework, and I can use it. So this is the simplest case I could think of, a watermarked image. It takes a regular image and adds a little bit of extra functionality to it. And how do I do it? Well, every view has a draw method on it that actually sh determines how it's drawn. I call the regular draw, the super classes draw, and then I do my little draw routine to put the watermark. What do you think would happen if I commented out this line of code? super on draw canvas. What do you think would happen? Would only draw the watermark. That would be my bet. The other bet is that it would blow up. I mean, that's always a good bet, right? But my guess is that it would um, only display the watermark. And there we go. All right. Why is that? Well, a regular image already has a draw method on it. 
And we still want to call that because we still want to draw the image. We just want to put something on top of that image. All right. Therefore, we call super draw. After that finishes, we then go and create our little paintbrush and set the different properties of it. And then away we go. Yes. In other words, if I were to do this, what do you think would happen? Well, the one bet is that it will blow up, all right? But the other bet is what? It will put the picture on top of the watermark. So it would have drawn the watermark, but immediately plopped the picture over top of it. And sure enough, there we go. So yeah, um, essentially, oh, I better put this right, otherwise next fall when I teach this class again, I'll be wondering why it doesn't work. Essentially, you have a, a canvas. A canvas is a mechanism that you can, quote, draw on. So I could, for example, put, like, draw a circle on top of the image if that's what I wanted to do, all right? Uh, in fact, one thing that we did in previous years is we implemented the game called Set. And Set is a, um, is a game where um, you get different colored symbols, um, some of which... Um, there's different number of symbols on each card, there's different colors, there's different symbols and all that. And if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember exactly how I did it, but again, the bottom line is you could use a canvas to draw those symbols. So if I wanted to draw a, three red circles, I could get my canvas that represented a car, card, draw the three red circles, and that way I didn't have to have a deck of cards like I did with, uh, with the, the blackjack game. In the blackjack game, the, the cards are too intricate, right? I mean, you wouldn't want to have to programmatically draw those things. Probably wouldn't be bad to do the numbered cards, right? You could draw two of hearts pretty easily, right? You, you could have a symbol for heart, you could have a symbol, uh, well, and you have the numbers, and you could just put the two in the corner and then put two hearts. But when you got to the face cards, that could be a little more difficult. Not impossible, but a little more difficult. Especially if you're going to make it look the way a standard deck of cards looks. Okay, questions. Um, what's up next? Next week, remember that we have only a one-day week because of Thanksgiving. Now, if you guys really, really, really wanted to meet on Thanksgiving, you guys are welcome to go and do it somewhere else, but I'm not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and I will continue with the topics that uh, folks have asked for. And if you can think of additional topics, let me know. Pardon me? Please email it if you have not already. Because, again, I, 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 you know, I could remember it, but I may also not remember it. So if you email it, there's a better chance of me remembering. All right, have a good weekend, and we'll see you next week. Long press on the multi-task button. Well, 
here, I have the physical option key. I don't have to long press on it. Um, not sure if that's standard. Yeah. That's the same tone for like. All right. I have a note, so it's okay. The thing that I'm trying to use is one handed. Repeat that, please. Because my phone's so big, so I'm having to. Oh, right, right. I can't even hear anything. Right. You, um. Love it. Not feeling well, or okay? I would say because I'm I'm having a hard time hearing you, and it's not just my old age, <laughs> hard of hearing. Yeah, it's been a